The following program is sponsored by the Greek, Ely's Radio Shack dealer, 570 Altman in downtown Ely, and brought to you as a public service by Georgetown Media in Ely, Nevada. Ely City Council meeting, June 22, 2023. <laughs>
Pine West development to lower the number of slot machines to 40. And that is what Love's has. Love actually has a license to have 50. So I think that needs to be taken into consideration. What happens if the prop project is denied? That you are a crime motel and they leave. Okay. The contamination in the vacant lot on Avenue D will remain. There is no record to be found of a complete cleanup. There are even monitoring wells at the dump because the initial removal of debris caused contamination on the dump site. And when this first happened, the fire at the laundromat, the well on North Street was affected and not being able to use for some time. The starting cost to core sample this lot is $70,000. This does not include the excavation of, re of removing any hazardous material. So is this, if this developer leaves town, who's going to clean it up? No one's going to buy that lot. They can't afford to. Okay. So how long is it going to be allowed to be an issue? And how long is the water from the neighborhood going to be allowed to run into that lot, maybe sending remaining contamination even deeper? Okay. The vacant lot on Avenue E will stay there. This is just a dump site for concrete and other construction material. The sewer line is so deep and so close to Avenue E that tying into it would require special equipment, special permits, and it would also intrude on Avenue E and maybe even the, the resident that lives next door. Uh, no one more. Okay. Thank you for your time. Any other public comment? <coughs> Brian Reed, Reed Incorporated, <clears throat> and I thank you, Mayor Robertson and the Council for your service and for giving me a couple of minutes to express my uh, thoughts regarding this ordinance that you're talking about today, Ordinance 751, Bill 2023-05. I am in support of the ordinance as it was updated on April 27th, and I think this is posted to discuss today. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate the great job done by our tour and rec board and other community and business leaders to bring more tourism to the area. Um, this ordinance helps to increase the number of motel rooms available, thereby increasing the number of people who can come and stay and stay longer and giving the tour and rec opportunities to bring in more uh, and potentially bigger events. There is talk that this ordinance is slowing growth in the community. Um, I see growth in the re in retail going on with this ordinance in place. Ridley's just built a new beans and brew coffee shop in town without having to change this ordinance, which ordinance I believe to be valuable to the growth of our community. I understand Golden Gate Petroleum just got permitting to build a new convenience store with a car wash in town. I'm not excited about that personally, <laughs> but they got that approval without changing this ordinance, which ordinance I believe would be valuable to the growth of our community. And the Woodwoods are wanting to build a new casino in town. And uh, while I'm not excited about having it in my backyard, they are, they are approved to do this and they are doing it without changing this ordinance, which again, which ordinance I again believe to be valuable to the growth of our community. I encourage you to keep this ordinance or vote for this ordinance um, that is being discussed in item three tonight. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and council members, and Jerry Lynn. Um, for the record, I'm Caroline McIntosh, and I'm here to address the agenda items regarding the proposed project by Pine West. I want to express my appreciation to Josh Lieberman from Pine West for reaching out to me to address my questions. Thank you, Josh, very much. And I really appreciate the maps this evening. That's a big help. During the conversation, Mr. Lieberman, in answering my questions, and I had many, he indicated that a traffic study has not been done for the proposed project. This is on the busiest intersection in our city. And that is working with NDOT, I would think would be one of the first things is a traffic study. 
In addition, if Terrible Herbs is going to lease and run the project, why isn't a representative from Terrible Herbs at this meeting? The council has twice voted to represent the overall needs of the community by requiring lodging. The shortage of lodging has been identified in every study to diversify our economy through hospitality. Lodging drives the spending in gas stations, restaurants, gaming establishments, and all other businesses and services in our community. Another restaurant, gaming facility, or coffee shop do not produce the multiplier effect that lodging does. A conservative figure of annual room taxes generated with the addition of just 40 rooms is the minimum of $167,000 a year, of which is divvied out to many organizations, including the city, which would be about $27,000 minimum. We all want the blight cleaned up. I couldn't agree more with Mrs. Moreno. The current owners of these properties have failed to maintain the properties, plain and simple. The proposed project by Pine West is welcome as long as it includes the requirement of lodging rooms. Follow the ordinance. How many times will this agenda item come before the council? The other new projects in town, which Mr. Reed referred to, have purchased the land and applied for the needed variances after they have made a large financial commitment to our community. Pine West has expended no money on buying properties and would like all the concessions and more before it invests any money. The project can go forward just fine and we look forward to this project. Just follow the ordinance. Please respect the decision from the previous council, of which Mr. Carson was on, and the current council, which is you, to require Pine West to follow the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. My name is Ann Kellogg. I represent, um, I don't even know, like I wear a lot of hats. I, a friend of mine told me that I need to make sure that I let you know that I live at Fairview Lane and that before that I lived over here on Clark Street and before that I was stayed at the Grand Central Motel until our house was ready. So I'm a resident of Ely in all ways that anyone can be a resident. Um, so I am here on behalf of, of myself, my family, um, the Hotel Nevada, Four Sevens, Grand Central, Eagle Junction, Fireside. Um, we have several residential properties and commercial properties. Um, I've already sent back my feedback on the on the, uh, the economic impact study. I just want to say that I, you know, I feel I might have a strong opinion that you should stick with the April 27th decision that reinforced the original ordinance in 2017. Um, we need, you know, as Caroline said, and, and we, we need lodging, you guys. Like we, I mean, my husband and I and, and the hotel, we're in the lodging business. We know that there's a huge demand for lodging. We've known that for years. You know, my dad um, died in 2020, was partners with Burt Woodwood for 30 years, and they knew that we needed lodging, and, and that we built, you know, that actually Jason pulled it off, but they, they started to, the whole, you know, thing with the, with the health, the Hilton, whatever, the Holiday Inn. And then my dad was working on putting in a Hilton property when he died. So we're, we are hyper aware of the need for lodging, not gas stations. And you could argue that the Loves has lodging with all the parking spaces that they have. So they, they really, they, a, lot of those, a lot of those trucks stay overnight. So they, are, they have a lodging component. Um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of let you guys know that. I also, um, you know, I just want to say, and I mean, I think this needs to kind of, you know, we're not we're not a grab and go, we're not a gas and go town. Like we are a destination, and we're trying to create that. I don't know about you guys, but I've had kind of a cool Ely month. Like I went to the Shell Razor last month, or the beginning of the month. It was amazing. It was like magic. You know, mm -hmm. today I went to a tree presentation um, that with the, that you guys are working on, which is going to be great for downtown when it's completed. I met a friend of mine at the Nevada Northern Railway Museum. We went and had coffee, and she's on her way to the Great Basin National Park. She spent the night here last night. People will come here. Oh, I forgot to mention, I have eight people out at the Duck Creek house staying for the weekend, and they're going to go on the Star Train. They're going to do stuff. So people will come here and stay if you give them a place to stay. 
Um, and we've done that already. We just need more of that. So um, a restaurant is one thing, but a, a slot bar disguised as a restaurant is another thing. So anything more than 16 machines is, is, is not, is a casino, it's a small casino. And, and I think that the people proposing what they're proposing thank you, So thank you for your time and your service to our community. Any other public comments? All right. Okay, cool. <laughs> we hear now from you. Hi, Stephanie Boyd with House Director from Town of Hall. Um, I just wanted to thank the council so much for um, standing by and supporting our local businesses here in town. I know it kind of feels like we're on a bit of a hamster wheel right now, and, and the wheel's still turning, so we appreciate your support. Um, in, in response to item number two, we, we also truly appreciate um, the previous city council votes and the current council votes to uphold these ordinances. Um, despite some of the inflammatory remarks made online about our, our, coming, our upcoming projects, um, our compaction, environmental, and soil tests have come back perfect, clean, green, perfect. We are rocking and ready to roll, and we are so excited about it. Um, BJ and Buzz of Basin Engineering, pushing everything forward on our gorgeous apartment complex, the casino with tons of hotel rooms to meet this desperate housing crisis that we have here in town when it comes to, to travelers. Um, so we just wanted to say thank you, we appreciate you guys, and let's get off this hamster wheel, let's move forward. Thank you. Any other public comment? On Zoom, yes. Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Burton Hilton, for the record, and fellow council members. Uh, I would love to see uh, both of those blocks redeveloped, but at what cost? I think we all agree that they're in poor condition, but the entire project seems to be getting shoved out in the council and community's throats. First, they wanted the street and alley abandoned. Then they wanted the zoning change. All of this without ever purchasing a single parcel of land. The council and RPC have been accommodating by conditionally approving both of those. Now they want the room requirement to not apply to them. The council again was accommodating and lowered the 50 room requirement uh, that was in place to, to 40, but it never seems to be enough. I'm not an engineer, uh, but the grade of the two properties seems like a large hurdle to overcome. And so if the council were to grant this waiver, uh, I would hope that the council would impose a very large bond on the developer so we don't get stuck with empty promises in a torn up part of the city. The proposed project is a paid or self-appointed spokesman, spokesperson, muckracking on Facebook, whose goal seems to, cause, to be cause hate and discontent. I've never seen Facebook posts on a council agenda. Do hearsay and keyboard warriors determine the fate of our community now? There are three other large projects that are in motion, and it hasn't been this hard because they're all following the established rules. According to the Terrible's website, they have 160 or 176 fuel stations, only six taverns and six casinos with us. That's 3.4% of their properties. This shows that they don't need a casino to be able to function and be a profitable business. The business impact survey uh, in your agenda shows 92% of the respondents are in favor of keeping the compromise room requirement of 40 rooms for the new project to have more than 16 slots. I urge you to vote against people making demands, hearsay, and especially muckrackers. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, on your agenda item 6B3, you consider Ordinance 751 regarding the requirement of 40 hotel or motel room for those <coughs> that intend to operate 16 or more slot machines. That needs to be passed. Only through property and room tax will there be a substantial benefit to our community. We have gaming properties, <coughs> old and new, that have made the positive commitment. Not one hotel or motel objected to anyone's licensing as long as they made the same commitment as others have made. I remind you, state NRS prohibits the city from assisting an enterprise which is already established in the city of Denver, in which the city is located. The city should not regulate how many slot machines a business has. If they can put in a thousand, so much the better. All you have to do is put up the rooms. 
Mr. Mayor, on your agenda item uh, 64, you're to consider requesting an appraiser for land for sale, <coughs> an appraiser for sale or lease of city property. That needs to be denied. The city has no business competing against the private sector when there is property available now. The city has no right to kill present property owners that are not allowed to use or rent their property as others do. I want to remind you that Council Nolwood stated in the previous city council meeting that he knew of one individual that had 30 properties but would not sell. The city has no right to force a person to sell his or her property. I am again requesting the name of the person he was talking about in a public meeting. Council person should not mislead or lie to those that they supposedly represent. Mr. Mayor, on your agenda item 6B2, you consider the acceptance of a business impact study. The regulations are set need to remain the same. <coughs> the council should not be revising regulations once set because one person or one business wants, to, wants tailored regulations to suit their ambitions. Established rules and regulations must be the same for everyone. <coughs> Mr. Uh, Mayor, on your agenda item 61, you're to review Facebook posts. This is a waste of time. Those people could have attended regular meetings receive proper information, not speculation. It appears most of the posts are generated by one person. That's just one opinion. And I respect that, but there's a lot more in this community that needs to be addressed. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, in that affected area, we're talking about cleanup. Just down on uh, Avenue B and 8th Street, we have graffiti. We never had graffiti like this. What agenda is it? Was this in relation to Mr. Jackson? The same as this. We're trying to clean up an area, but we're not regulating property the rules and regulations. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up again later. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. I'm okay. I'll make arm wrestle for you. <laughs> There's no arm wrestling. I'm in a good foot race position though now. You are? Yeah. Congratulations. So, um, Carrie Jane Power, 14, 1417 Mill Street. Under new business number one, Facebook posts. I'm not a fan of social media for a multitude of reasons, and as such, I do not participate, per per participate in any platform across the board. For those who try and educate the community on Facebook, there are far more who use it to drag us down with negativity, often causing more questions than answers. I find the opportunity to come before these boards and speak is where the real impact can be made and should be going forward. While I understand it's scary to speak up and expose yourself to the vulnerability and criticism which is likely to follow, and more on that later, the proper place to raise your voice is in the public comment forum. However, I commend Councilwoman Elliott for calling these posts to your attention. Now on your new business two and three on your impact study and you're amending the city code. Your impact study is misleading as it only appears 25 letters were sent out to current and prospective business owners, and as such, less than half responded to the survey. Of those who did respond, there were an overwhelming number opposed with just one in favor. The larger picture is more than 50% did not respond. How was the sampling determined? What blight businesses, i.e. the competition, were they the ones asked their opinion? I would assert an impact study should include a mar much larger sampling as there are over currently 550 business licenses in the city of Ely. So who determined these 25 represented a suitable sampling? You have another opportunity tonight to do the right thing, free of intimidation and threats from the local casino owners and pause action on the proposed change to Ordinance 751. It's my understanding that Pine West is coming back before this board with another proposal, and we should hear them out before changing the city code to satisfy what is essentially for the benefit of one casino owner and one potential developer. And I say potential because the $50 million development proposal is just that. It's a proposal. They do not have the required zoning to proceed with their additional grandiose 300 luxury apartments, which again, I will remind you, are gonna rent for more than $2,000 a month for a one bedroom. Please let this guy for lack of emotion until Pine West is back to the table. Finally, on agenda item number four on your appraisal request, I would again caution you against getting into the real estate business, even though I'm the first to desperately admit we need affordable housing in this community. I attended the county commission meeting last week to hear the update from Summerall on the Park Avenue project and personally demand that JCR be asked to receive equal treatment from the commission and present a progress report on the 17th Street housing project. It's been installed so long, as has the Duck Pond, Cather Park, Rig Mining Park, etc. 
I'd invite you all to join me in the next meeting on Wednesday the 28th at 10.30 when Casey Jones of JCR will be present to provide an update on why he has not fulfilled the terms of the agreement that he entered into on May 11, 2021 to provide this desperately needed housing. Perhaps had he followed through with this commitment, I wouldn't be having the unpleasant prospect of 5D in the Roy Woods and their 400 luxury apartments out my front door. Any other public comment? <coughs> Pat Robinson, City of EA. I'm here to address our model and our new business. Facebook should be never be brought to a council meeting and put on the agenda. If there are people that want to complain, and I'm sorry, this is probably a repeat. I didn't hear anything else. They need to follow correct protocol. Come to the meeting, call in, and write a letter to be heard in public comments. So I am recommending or requesting that item one be taken off the agenda and correct protocol be followed for public comments. <coughs> Excuse me. I've seen these comments on my time talking and are most are from new residents that have moved here and people that do live here that I haven't that haven't attended the meetings. So therefore, they don't really know all the details and are going by hearsay. A lot of people move here for the small town charm. And most really love it, and then some do nothing but complain constantly. Okay. <laughs> and one thing I want everybody to remember, we was selected as the number two small town in the county in the country, the whole entire country, to visit. So we have a lot to uh, follow up on. I mean, we have to have a good place. And that says a lot. Evie does want new businesses, but remember, quality is much better than quantity. That's why the council that I was on previously voted for the ordinance unanimously to have hotel rooms to protect what kind of casinos we would have in the end and not have slot parlors. And what I've seen previously, I missed out today because I was late, but I see Pine West as kind of a bully that rolled into town wanting the city to abandon a city street in a, an uproot a neighborhood and a residential area and to change residential area to commercial. What would happen to the people's homes in the RV park? Where would they go? Pine West, are you going to place them on some land that you've bought? Are you going to find them a home? They're important too. And do we really need another gas station, convenience stores, coffee drive throughs Terrible, Terrible's restaurant. Thank you, Ms. Robinson. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yeah. <coughs> Morning, Travis. I'm one of the new residents she's talking about. And we've been here a couple years. And we moved here for the small town. And we like the small town. But we also watch the four or five families that control the small town. And it's not good. Saying that a truck stop has a place to park trucks, makes it a motel. How does that benefit the community? Where do we get taxes off of that? Saying that we don't need another place to eat. You know, I, I'm not saying that everything is good, but saying that when somebody buys something, they have to provide to the old tenants somewhere to go, that's a little ridiculous. I. I think the town needs to grow, and it needs to grow smart. But I don't know that growing smart is every place that comes in has to have 50 hotel rooms. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I just know that we need new. We need to clean up all these places and get some new places in town. And if this is a start, it's a start. If not, you guys make that decision. All we can do is give you input. And my input is, let's get some new blood in town. Let's make this place a nice place. 
Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, what was your name? Monty. Monty. Shran. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? Actually worked till six. I had to clock out early to come here, so I actually took a little bit of hit on my paycheck. So some of us use that Facebook just to interact because we can't physically be here. That's all. Any other public comment? Hearing and seeing none, we'll close public comment and move on to item three. Mayor discussion for possible action, approval of agenda, including removal of agenda items. And I'd like to let the council know that item B9, uh, we did not get any bits on that, so we'll be removing that item. Any objections? Mr. Mayor? Yes. With respect to Councilman Allen, I'd like to remove item number one from the agenda. I read Facebook, do not belong to the City Council or any governmental meeting. It's, all it is is written here, so in my opinion, so I'd like to have that removed. It's, it's just going to stir it up again, but we'll be right back in. I just won't think Facebook comments. On, but I'm open to Samantha's discussion also before the vote. So is your motion then approval of the agenda with removal of items one and nine under the Yes, sir. Is there a second for that? I'll second that. Second from Councilman Carson. Any further discussion? I would like to keep item one. Um, the point of item one was to point out the other side of the coin. <clears throat> we do have a lot of opposition, but I think it's important to say there is a community of people that are in favor of growth, and I'm not saying we need to go through every comment. If you want to read it, it's all on white pine talking. But it was to point out, in general, that there is another side to this coin that needs to be looked at. Fair in scheme of things. Thank you. And I, I just counter that they are welcome to come to this meeting, or if the group gets together, we can make arrangements to get a community meeting or a town hall meeting in the convention center. We've gone through that out before and that worked. So, again, if the group wants to do that, come to the city and say, take it off this agenda and then out loud at the convention center. But all that's going to do is delay the rest of this agenda. Is there further discussion? No, we'll be fine with that. I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Carries the board. Item 4, City Department of Reports, Fire Chief. Uh, not more reports, but it's going to be a very important. Uh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you have the court, municipal yes, court judges, um, written report. Judge Costa, do you have anything to add? <coughs> I guess so. Uh, City Attorney. Uh, just want to report the, the city of Ely owns and leases property at the Georgetown Ranch and um, it came to our attention that there was a significant white top issue there with weeds. So I did send a, a letter to the VC, um, gave him 15 days to correct uh, the issue, and he did call me and said that he would be on top of it as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you. City Clerk? Yes. Um, this is from Jennifer Lee, Mayor Robertson, and City Council members. I will not be attending tonight's meeting due to visit from out of town family. I am providing the following report. Uh, under grants, the City Central Ely Sewer and East Ely Water Earmark Cost Share Waiver requests are under consideration. Our EPA Project Officer has assured me she will email updates as she receives them. We received no bids yesterday from Trap Club's Hunter Education Building due to equipment manufacturers not providing prices to the vendors used by pr prospective contractors. A second bid invitation will be released later, which will be paid for with the Endow grant. Therefore, I am requesting item 6B9 be removed from tonight's agenda. I have been working with uh, the BLM to draw our grade up grant as our funding hasn't been transferred yet to ASAP.gov. We are requesting a reimbursement of $8,075.71, which is from September 28th last year through May 20th for large residential items. I prepared for the Governor's Office of Economic Development a uh, regular site visit June 12th. They audited records for six CDBG, D, CDBG grants and were happy with the results. I attended CDBG grant application and administration training last Tuesday. 
here at the library, go ahead and we'll notify us of our LMI status as the state demographers office has had turnover. Jeanette and I attended local government finance training put on by Pool Pact and Elko last Wednesday. It was very beneficial and Jeanette is arranging similar training for the council next week. I emailed ComNet today for a completion ETA of the city's wireless area network. Complaints, uh, Public Works abated 1075 Avenue D last week and an intent to lien notice has been sent certified mail to the owners for the cleanup costs. To date, my office has received 27 complaints this year. 14 of those complaints remain active. <coughs> there is one remaining complaint from the prior year for a total of 15 active complaints. Okay. Thank you. Uh, City Treasurer's Vice Chair. Yeah. Uh, City Public Works Supervisor. I was just going to inform you that the pumps for the fire station have been ordered, and that with BJ's help, we have uh, sent out packages to six contractors for installation. And the, the follow up on Leo's a little bit uh, we don't, but Tri County has been hired, and they have started to spray uh, city property at White Top and Monster Suites. And if you happen to see any in city property that I'm missing, just let me know. What's the estimated delivery of the pump plant? Six weeks, they were, they were ordered three weeks ago, and it was like six to eight weeks. The packages for the contractors have to be in by July 15th, with uh, two weeks after that. So we're still paying expenses? Yeah. We're looking for a portable, we're still looking for a portable to try to buy. We, we need to use it for the contractors. We got to uh, talk to a couple contractors today on that. If they need to purchase or bring with them a, a portable, but the problem is it's so deep that the curve on the pumps have to be way high to lift it up out of there. But we're working on it. I mean, it's, we're, it's How is the road repair going? Uh, very well. I think, I, I, think, I, think, I think they're catching up on We're doing a little process next week. We have a, a I don't want to go and use the word salesman, but a man bringing uh, equipment to do a scrub sale with the chips that we'll be talking about. We'll be doing 12, 13, and 14. From Altman up to Avenue. <coughs> to Avenue. M. M. We're going to go all the way. We purchased the oil. So that'll be the 29th, I think. It'll be a scrub sill. And then a chip over the top of it. Then with another chip over the top of that in about three months. Good. That'll be interesting. Yeah. I think that's good. How did the uh, trip to Texas go for our road department? It went well. Uh, <coughs> they're not, uh, I don't know, there's some mixed feelings on it. But okay. We're having a meeting next Tuesday. If you'd like to come and be a part of it and get their input, my Mark Trout from the county and Mike Sturgeon from the city, Thanks. and have their feelings about that. Thanks, Mike. Uh, city water operators, city building official. concerned we're uh, still waiting for them to address some of the mitigation issues um, I don't have the statutory authority to hold up their building permit based on um, some issues that are kind of outside of the general building permit but they do understand that they need to satisfy those um, councilman Al Allworth I did send you a link to the Dropbox uh, that contains the plans so feel free to reach out with any questions um, as far as remediation I'm working on those kind of big lots back there um, by the um, on high street in the, the brothel district to try to get some of that stuff cleaned up I've had a little bit of success, uh, but what I've run into is the ordinance for outdoor storage of construction materials. Uh, it's allowed, you're just not allowed to store it in such a manner that harbors rodents, insects, snakes, that sort of thing. It's very, very ambiguous. The county, uh, well, I, the county officially doesn't allow any outdoor storage of construction materials, and I would advise that the city look into a similar uh, restriction along those lines so that it's very clear as far as what the enforcement authority is. So, any questions? That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll move to item five report to City Council. Uh, we'll start with Councilwoman Jerry Lynn Williams Harper. I have nothing at this time. Thank you. Okay. Councilman Oliver. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Got a little report. Uh, I'd like to send out kudos to NDOT for getting the traffic lines repainted on Alma and Great Mason Boulevard before the 4th of July holiday. Now, if they could just repaint or better paint the bumper car intersection, at Great Basin and Altman to hopefully direct traffic safer. 
Uh, Senators Cortez, Catherine Cortez Masto, and Jackie Rosen recently announced that the Department of the Interior had provided a statement of that at $31,196,044 under the Payments in Lieu Tax PILT program for rural counties in Nevada for this fiscal year 2023. White Pine County share is $1,445,109, an increase of $97,451 over fiscal year 2022. The PILT payments begin in 1977 because local governments cannot tax federal lands. Annual PILT payments are intended to help local governments carry out vital services such as firefighting, police protection, construction of public schools and roads, and search and rescue operations. My reason for bringing this announcement to this meeting and for the public's information is because it is in my belief, because it is in my belief that the White Pine County should report how these funds over the years have been allocated within White Pine County. And yes, the city of Ely is part of the county. Former County Commissioner Steve Stork up until the time of his unfortunate passing, was expressing great interest in the quotation's fair sharing of this funding with the city and outlying towns and boards. The school district should also be interested in how these funds are being spent. The current city staff was made aware of PILT payments last year by myself, and the staff should be more aggressive in having the county <coughs> share funding from the PILT payment to offset the use of general fund revenues to pay for police protection and providing fire EMS services currently under contract for runs outside of the city for White Pine County residents. Recent negotiations between the county and city for law enforcement protection will cost the city an additional $59,044 from the general fund for this upcoming fiscal year with a built-in increase for the next several years. This could have been paid with bill monies during the negotiations. The city fire department through contract negotiations with the county receives only $185,000 from the county yearly to provide fire EMS runs for the county. The budget for the city fire department for the next fiscal year exceeds $1.4 million. PILT funding can and should be used to offset some of these costs. White Pine County should investigate providing some additional funding using PILT funds for their county fire departments to boost and maintain the wonderful and dedicated fire departments they once had in past years. Council Mallet. report. Council Mallet. No report. Council Mallet. I just want to report that I spent last week in Elko coaching the um, League All Stars, and uh, we were fortunate enough that our nine and ten year old won District Three, and right. they're going to State um, Middle July. And this weekend we're at Ely's hosting uh, the Little League Softball uh, term, District Three tournament. So if you're bored this weekend, you stop by and uh, watch some softball. There's three divisions that are there, so there's about nine different softball. Is that teams. a merit or the It's going to be the Little League Park. Put it up there, so it should yeah. be a hop in there. So yeah, it was a good weekend for uh, uh, Wi-Fi and Little League uh, baseball, and hopefully the same for softball. So. Great. Uh, you have my report on. Um, Permits I signed there. Uh, I'd also like to report, I think pretty much everyone is aware, but the state of Nevada did get awarded the raise grant by the federal government, um, I think about $24 million to do our, our main street here, which was exciting to hear, and we appreciate the help of our congressional delegation on that for sure. Um, we're going to have some exciting projects coming up here in Wyoming County and Julie for the next two years, so we're excited about that. Uh, item six. We have the consent agenda. We have minutes from May 11th and bills from June 8th and June 15th. I'd like to disclose, Mr. Mayor, that some of the bills are being paid for the fire department and the volunteers. I'm a past member. I will vote in the best interest of the city to employ. Okay. I'd like to disclose that I, um, part of the bills I have a vested interest in, but I feel like I can vote in the best interest of the city as well. Okay. <coughs> Uh, I will also disclose that uh, my husband is a member of the city volunteer fire department, but he doesn't get treated differently than anybody else, and I don't vote, so there we go. With that, I'll entertain a motion for the bill. So moved. Motion for Council Mallow, for a second. I'll second. I'll second. Well, uh, second from Council William Sarker. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. So ordered. Item B, new business. Uh, we're on item 
to Council uh, Item 2, Mayor Robertson, City Attorney Cahoon, discussion for possible action acceptance of business impact study regarding proposed rule to amend section 3 5 13 of the Ely City Code requiring gaming license applicants who intend to operate 16 or more slot machines to have 40 hotel rooms. Determination of whether the proposed rule imposes a direct and significant economic burden or directly restricts the formation, operation, or expansion of a business, and consideration and possible implementation of uh, methods or amendments to reduce the impact of the proposed rule on prospective established businesses. Um, Leo, would you mind just giving a quick rundown for the council how those went out and to who they went out and why they went out for those people? Yeah, yeah, so um, I believe there was a public comment on this issue, actually. Um, the NRS only requires that the city send notice to um, businesses and trade associations that are likely to be affected by the proposed rule. So essentially we sent it to everybody who um, either is currently running a gaming operation or likely to run a gaming operation, which would have been Pine West at this point. Uh, the city only had knowledge of, of Pine West having any intent on bringing such a business to the city. Um, so letters were sent out, they were given 15 days to respond, and we, we do have those responses here. Um, Are those mails certified or just mailed? I, I, to be honest, I don't remember how they were mailed, but we, we did get everybody's responses, and um, those were provided um, in the business impact study here. Are there any other questions? Since you got everybody's, but it says there was no response in 13. Them? Yeah, so, let's see. Um, yeah, so um, they were given 15 days to respond, and that's, that's to the extent of To the extent that um, maybe there was one owner for two or three properties, did those people get one response, or is it one response per license? I believe it was per license. Okay. Um, in consultation with our attorney prior to this meeting, the way this needs to work is the council needs to um, acknowledge the findings uh, for the record um, and then have a conversation of possible remedies for those affected, if any, and then decide what they want to do about it. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, as I stated prior to public comments, um, if there are respondents with us tonight that would like to further comment on the impact of this possible uh, ordinance that we're working on. I will allow that tonight. Is there anybody in the room respondent who would like to comment? I was told that Pine West had something to say. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, Josh Gibberman with Pine West. Appreciate your time and everything that's been going on over the last year to try and move this project forward. Um, I'll try and be brief and kind of walk everybody through where we're at, where we've gone to get to this point and what we're continuing trying to compromise to get to a project that, that makes sense, that works for this area of town. Um, we spent the last year plus getting four various property owners all under contract, going through due diligence, survey, title, um, initial environmental site assessment. We've got additional environmental work for lead, asbestos, ground soil, groundwater contamination. That's in our next set of due diligence to get through this year. Um, it's a lot of work to get done in that area for four acres. Um, when we started uh, last year on this plan here, uh, this was with truck fueling. Uh, we kind of took that one's information, talked with neighbors, talked with residents, understood this was not a good area of town, hence we have loves on one side and Golden Gate going on the other side of town. We worked with our tenant, uh, Terribles, to figure out a solution to try and continue to make the project feasible without the diesel islands. We understood the necessary needs of more restaurants, more places for entertainment. We looked at a 12,000 square foot building earlier this year, that we, which would bring potential up to 100 machines. We heard all the voices. We heard everybody were trying to reflect and listen and to everybody stakeholders in this town, in these projects, to redevelop this portion of town. We've come with a revised plan now that is only a 6,000 square foot restaurant and tavern with only 40 machines. Be the least number of machines in town, Loves holds a license for 50 machines. Um, 
I think this is great for the area. I mean, we're going to add between the three businesses, the restaurant and tavern and gaming, the convenience store, the Starbucks with the drive through close to $6 million in revenue between the three businesses, an additional 40 to 50 jobs generates close to 200000 in taxable revenue to the county, which is passed to the, the whole municipality. Um, just here to answer more questions. Could you speak, um, I'm, I'm guessing my question was the one opposed response they got back here, um, and as this is a business impact study, if this goes into effect the way it is written, how does that impact your proposed business? Kills the project. We, we've said for a year we can't build hotel rooms. It doesn't, economical, it's not what we do, it's not what our tenant does, it's not our business, it's the cost of the project itself. It, it just we made it clear this is, this is what we can deliver. And we continue to try to push and see what we can do and mm -hmm. what economically makes sense for this project. Okay, are there any other questions for Mr. Rizzo? Josh, I'm going to say that it kills it. Has there been any conversations just to do, just to do the C store portion and not go behind the cabinet meetings? The, the problem is, sorry, and this goes back to the questions you had, Mr. Allworth. The, the elevations and the way everything has to be tapered and tiered and graded, and because of the access coming off of 7th Street and the elevation from Altman to the north, and then the right of way of Avenue E is so large that it doesn't give enough frontage up on Altman to make all circulations work as well as access with NDOT because of Altman. So there's really the only way to make it work is we know NDOT's going to have restricted access off of Altman based on our conversations with Brittany Bardo at NDOT that having, that's why we had to vacate Avenue E and vacate the alley in order to make the access and circulation work. We have half a dozen projects in the state of Nevada. We understand their access control and the way their movements work. So we knew what we had to do from the beginning when we started this. I think the question was, does, does Terrible's have any interest in just developing a C store without the... Which is like creating E back here. I mean, we talked about E before, but I mean, it looks like if we just had this portion, is that is that not an option that need the, the casino portion? We've looked at this earlier this year with them in their office, and unfortunately we couldn't make it work with just the front portion. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Lee? Josh, does Pine West have they then built any properties with motel, hotel, no? We do not. We don't do hotel, motel projects. And terribles? They do not. Because you folks are going to build the property and what, lease it for X amount of years or, or, or whichever tenants of terribles. Terribles leases from us, correct. So they have a 20 year lease with 30 years worth of options on our projects. So we're getting ready, ready to break ground on one of our properties over in Winnemucca. We have 10 acres over there that we closed on last year. We just finished our annexation, replatting, and that project will start construction uh, late third quarter. So, so Pine West puts all the money and builds it, and then the tenant pit comes in, manages it for 10, 20 years. So basically, it's not terrible that at the front does not want the motel, it's Pine West. Is that a true statement? Yes and no. So Pine West owns the dirt. We don't do any physical construction. Terribles and our tenants do all of their own construction. So we just own the property. We handle the entitlements. We handle a lot of the permitting to get it ready for them to come in and do all of the construction. So they're the experts in the building. We're not. You're saying the tenant does their own building. Correct. We're not vertical guys. We don't do vertical work. We don't want to do vertical <laughs> work. <laughs> They're masters at it. They've built hundreds of stores. We let people that know how to do construction and do vertical do the vertical work. So you acquire the property and, and we own the property. Yep. So we own 13 acres in Wells. We own five acres in Carlin. We own 10 acres in Winnemucca. And we're invested in the state of Nevada. We continue to grow. We have a project we're working on in Tonopah. So I mean, we're committed to the area. Any other questions for Mr. Just to see along with the Carol, sure. great question. So the footprint where the miller sits right now, they're not interested in just cleaning up that or purchasing that. They want we couldn't make it work with just the three parcels up front just because of the depth of the property and the access would be restricted off of all. And hence we had to go through the process of abandoning Avenue E conditionally and the alleyway and the rezoning on the rear parcels to make it all four acres contiguous. We'll get it off and go back. Who, who is we? We can't make it work. 
Terrible's in Pine West. I mean, we've looked at it multiple ways in various drawings. I think we're on site plan number seven. So I mean, we've looked at various ways to try and just make it work in the front, but with the restricted access and depth, it just doesn't work. Because the restricted ac access, when you we're talking about the very first time with the mayor and myself, looking at your map, that without a bank and trust, is that's where you guys are going to use what I would remember hearing was you're going to use your property for the access off Great Base or up East Alton, turn it in like that. It doesn't even affect end dots right away because you're going to use your property, the egress, ingress, and egress is going to be affected for end dots highway. But you were going to use your property so it wouldn't disturb all the fine work QMD just completed. So when you said the difficulty, and I can I and I can understand pulling off and going down, trying to turn around with a semi coming back up Seventh Street, there's gonna be a sub. Yeah, there, there won't be. I mean, the only semi that'll be on here will just be delivery vehicles and okay. fail and store delivery vehicles. Right. So, so no, no large eighteen wheelers. That's what you start out. Personal vehicles and so forth. So where's the difficulty that you're seeing um, getting going in there? So when you come off of Allman, this will be restricted probably to right in, right out, so that you won't be able to, without having access off of 7th Street, is the reason for the contiguous properties needing to be all one property. Going down over the hill. Because currently there is no access along the back side of that avenue. Is right. that what we're saying? Right. Okay. <laughs> Just a continuation on that a little bit. Is there a thought, I mean, because these are different properties here, can we? Because we've already talked about the Avenue of Avenue E and we kind of conditionally said that was okay. Just going to here, I mean, then you still have this, you have your parking lot here without this, and it sounds like Terrell's has many gas stations without this part of it. Is, has that been discussed? It has, but from an economic return for the cost of this project to work, the three businesses are needed. The three businesses are what I'm sorry? The convenience store, Starbucks, and the tavern being and bar facility. So we've, you know, at the beginning, we've just continued to work to figure out the cost and continue to figure out ways to make this work. Like I said at the beginning, you know, that's why Lugs is here. That's why Golden Gate's coming. The diesel gallons in this market are big, and it's big margin. So that's why we started with diesel, but, you know, then went to the 12,000 square foot building, and now we're kind of at the smallest, least number of machines. That are there any other questions about the impact this ordinance would have? I I have one, Mayor. Um, and again, uh, forgive me, Josh, but in, and I know it's uh, very, very simple. Um, but what I'm hearing, and please correct me if I'm wrong, is all of this is contingent upon a few slot machines. What I'm hearing is if we can't get those slot machines, it's not worth us doing anything else. That's correct. Thank you. Any other questions for Mr. Lugo? Can you briefly went over kind of all of the numbers that were said? And I wrote down a number earlier that um, Caroline had mentioned was 167,000. And so was that, Caroline, I don't know if you can answer this for me. Was 167,000 what room tax would generate if there were 40 hotel rooms on that corner for a year? Yes. Okay. So can you talk about the numbers that this would generate? Because I'm seeing a bunch of numbers in this email. Um, but talk about like what the county and the city would potentially be getting with this project. So you would have the sales tax that would be generated from the businesses. Fuel tax all goes to the state, so we don't look at fuel tax per se. So the, I assume the only way that would come back would be is CTX. <clears throat> So the sales estimated to be around six million annually in revenue that would be subject to sales tax. The total sales tax is 7.72%. Half of that goes to the state, a little over 3%, goes to White Pine County. So that's roughly 200,000 that would go directly to the county as well as all the increase in real estate taxes for this type of project. Um, the current hotel tax being generated in this property, the Great Basin Inn last year generated $8,800 for all of 2022, generated $8,800. So, you know, the total amount of room tax allocation coming into White Pine and the city all of 2022 was 
roughly 1.9 million for all room tax, RV tax that was collected. The Bonner RV park actually doesn't, for some reason, contribute any RV tax, but those three pieces, so we can white pine tourism, 2022, 1.4 million, and then city of Ely, about 370,000, and then about 66 grand went to the golf course out of that 2022 room tax allocation. So those are kind of some of the numbers and what we can generate in comparison. Um, Mary, I mean, I just do want to say, um, just with a comment that Josh made, I, I think that a part of that needs to be predicated upon. We know what the um, state of that hotel is right now and the lack of services and the lack of money that they're making. So um, I, I just want to be careful about juxtaposing what is sitting there now with 40 brand new rooms in good shape prepared for. Um, that's sort of like comparing apples and oranges. So I just want to make that comment. Thank you. Any other public comments? Can I ask one more question? question. Thank you. Uh, just, and I'm trying to keep this on the impact. The numbers that you talked about, and I, it's been a while since I've reread this, and I'll be honest. Um, do you have it broken down per entity, new store, gas? And then the tavern, because you're, you're, are you lumping all three of these together, right? Yep, all three of those are the Do you have a breakdown of those three impacts? And this kind of goes back to my original question is all this tax money, how much of it is it coming from the tavern versus the convenience store and things like that? So I just wonder if there's a breakdown between the, the, the three different entities. I guess Starbucks, you're counting Starbucks as one entity, this convenience store, the gas station, and then Right. right, convenience store, just the inside of the store, not the fuel. Right, you have it broken down by any, or you know the numbers for those? We don't, just the number we were given, the three businesses would generate 40 to 50 for one part time and 6 million in annual revenue. Yeah, I just want to make sure everything is. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Lieberman? Okay. Is there anybody, thank you, Mr. Lieberman. Is there anybody who responded? Please, Ms. Kelp. revenue and things like that, but we haven't heard about the customer base at all. And quite frankly, without the rooms, the, the casino, which it is a casino at, at 40 machines, um, is, is basically drawing their customers from the neighborhood, and the neighborhood is Ely. So there's 3,900 people who live in the city of Ely, um, and that's according to the last census data. So, so even if you draw from the 10,000 people who allegedly live in, in White Pine County, you know, I think that's a little, I'm not convinced of the 10,000, but that's just me. Um, you know, the, you're, you're not, the people who are driving along the road aren't gonna stop at the drive through stop Starbucks, and oh, by the way, go play a bunch of slot machines. So the, so the money that you're gonna be making in tax revenue is gonna be coming out of the pockets of the people of this community. And that's Stella, what if your comments could be um, contained to how this would affect your business? Well, I mean, absolutely. How to affect my business? Yeah. Which one? Well, whichever Which one, one that you got the, the business who, impact tenants, study for. The people who live in the places that I rent to them, like my the residents of the of the of the townhouses, they're probably going to be short on their rent because they're not going to be able. To, they're going to be putting all their money to slot machines. That machine. isn't what you got the business impact study for. I mean, I'm just saying. You got the business impact study for your casino, yes. Pardon me? You got the business impact study for your casino business, correct? Okay, well, there's lots of businesses that are well, I know, but with we're business. having a discussion on the business impact study. And right, I understand, but I'm just saying, the economic impact study is incomplete right. if, it doesn't, if it doesn't address the customer base. That's all I'm saying. This isn't a community impact study, it is a business impact study. Okay, well, if thank you, you for coming. Please let me know how it. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody who would like to comment or be affirmative on how this would impact their business? Good evening, council members. Jason Woywood. We received the business impact. It was a statement, not so much a study. Uh, and we responded along with 11 of the other 12 respondents, confirming the council decision on April 27th. Um, like Mr. Hilton said, that's over 90%. And 
to address how we would be affected if a tenant comes in who, yes, operates hotels, who, yes, would put in a restaurant with 40 slot machines. I've never been to a restaurant with 40 slot machines. Um, of course, everyone's going to be affected by that. And it doesn't generate additional revenue. It takes revenue away from other competitors here in town. So when we talk about what businesses are affected with a C-store operation, it's the existing businesses. So the, the inflated tax numbers that they're coming up with is splitting the pie. It's simple math. It doesn't bring additional revenue to town. So that's how we're affected. Stick by the Sydney ordinance. Build a hotel rooms that will generate additional revenue for everybody. And then the other 11 to 12 respondents of the impact statement won't be affected. So that's how we're affected. It's not bringing additional revenue to town. And that's why the 2017 council members voted for this. That's why you guys voted for this, because you understand simple math. Are there questions for Mr. Warwick? So just a point of clarification, Jason. I understand what you're saying. So basically, the residents are going to buy 10 cups of coffee. We got five places to get coffee. They're still going to buy the 10 cups of coffee. Exactly. Any other questions for Mr. Warwick? Thank you. Um, so how does the council find on this study? Mr. Anderson, I want to yes. you. Yes. On the color thing here, I apologize. I'm a little bit of hammer with some certain colors. <laughs> so it says there were 10 letters, but I don't see the number 10. I need to, I, I can see blue pretty well. The one's 13 and the 11. So where is the 10 at in that graph? We had, there were 10 letters, but I see in there were 12 respondents, and 13 going left to right there. Okay. 12 responded, uh, 13 did not respond, 11 number were in favor, and then there was one opposed. There's not 10 number. But so under the in favor comment, it says there were 10 letters oh. which agreed. Is that just a, yeah, that's what, a math error? That could be just a typo. I, yeah. okay. So there were 12 respondents in total, 11 were in favor of. The ordinance is proposed and one was opposed. Okay, thank you. Just okay. follow the colors or the color on the lot in favor. All right, thank you. Any other questions from the council on it? So we don't, we'll need someone to sum up how, they, how the council finds on this. Who thinks they're up to the job? And that's just a determination of whether there's a business within the city of Ely that has been impacted or will be impacted by this rule. According to the study, it doesn't look like one's going to be affected. There is one that will be affected. Yeah. So you, you said earlier that we would have to have them come prove how they're going to be affected before we know No, the, the council needs to just read the report and acknowledge that there will be one that will be affected. And then consider options, consider options. Mm -hmm. um, to address that. Whether they feel that needs to be addressed further than it already is or not, the council has done some of that consideration when they discuss previously per capita things, and then they don't have to, it just says consider. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's consider methods to reduce the, the negative impact to that business. Okay. And, and the council has done that at previous meetings, um, but I, it would be good to have a finding um, in the motion <coughs> That, that has been done as well. Okay. So is there, there has to be a motion to accept this? Mm -hmm. thing? Is that all that has to be done? Yeah, it, it would be a motion to accept the business impact study, the determination that there has been a business impacted, and that the council has considered methods to reduce the impact. Great. So the wording on the paper, the one opposed, they give an option, you know, with their suggestion. The wording would be exactly what you just said, if that's the case. If there are options the council wants to consider to address that one proposed business, then that would need to be part of the motion. Okay, so the proposal that, that printed on this paper, that is there. That's what they came back with. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the, yeah, the new alternative. Wow. Gosh, I see why this is a lawyer's job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, Mayor, so, Mayor I, can I try to make that motion? You may give it your best shot. 
I think that we um, need to make the uh, motion that we have indeed sent out an impact study that uh, those who have had concerns have had an opportunity to voice those concerns. Uh, the council has listened to those concerns. And we uh, need to move on and accept the impact study. Is that simple enough or what else am I going to say? seems like he's sitting on the fence but isn't going to put up a point, so we're going to say yes. So I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Motion from Councilman Williams Harper, second from Councilman Carson. Any further discussion? This is oh. just accepting the business impact study. And acknowledging the findings of it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Carry this forward. Now we'll move on to item three. Mayor Robertson discussion for possible uh, Mayor Robertson City Attorney for discussion for possible action. Approval of first reading of ordinance 751, bill number 2023-05. Proposed ordinance amending title three, chapter five, section 13 of the Ely City Code requiring gaming license applicants who intend to operate 16 or more slot machines that have at least 40 hotel rooms and providing other matters related thereunto. Um, I would just like to point out for the benefit of the council and the public that this is not being brought back at anybody's request. This is the process. It will need to have a second reading There'll be a hearing at any of those junctures. The council can propose amendments, um, hear discussion, and go on to it. But this is the process for setting up an ordinance. So um, we'll have, we're on this hamster wheel for a while, like you're not. With that being said, um, I will entertain questions or a motion on the side. I'll move to approve. Motion to approve uh, the reading of the ordinance as submitted. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second from Councilman Williams Harper. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. That's four in favor, one against. Motion passes. Item four, Mayor Roberts, a discussion for possible action approval to send a request for qualification to appraisers within a 250 mile radius to determine which appraisers are interested in performing appraisals for sale or lease of city property. Um, this is in connection with that uh, disposal of the Belford property. Uh, in my discussion with Clerk Lee, I think we will be sending out a list to people identified by our local real estate agents who just do work here rather than send it to everybody on the list because that could be like 200 people for no purpose. We have a list of people who actually do work here and we'll just send it out to them. But this is the this is the next step in that process. So I'll make a motion on that. We'll make that motion, Mr. Mayor. Motion from Councilman Oliver. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second. Second from Councilman Trask. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carry this order. I have five mayor members in discussion for possible action approval for mayor and city council members to attend the Nevada League of Cities and Municipalities 2023 annual conference, August 8th through 11th. 2023. Um, this is on the agenda now because uh, we'll need to register for, I think, early registration for this conference is the first week of July. And I wanted to make sure that whoever wanted to go, we get registered so we get the savings on time. And where's it going to be held up from there? It's going to be in Vegas, if anyone can know it. I'll move to approve as long as I don't have to go. Who, who would like to go? <laughs> I'll, I'll second. Uh, <laughs> I would like to go. Councilman Trask, Councilman Harper, and myself. Did the clerk say she was going to go? Not say either way. Okay, I know she didn't go last year. Um, we have at least those four members. I'll entertain a motion. So three would agree that one. Well, three council members and myself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So moved. As long as you don't have to go. Yeah. Second, as long as you don't have to go. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. I'm sorry if you second that. Councilman Oliver. Thank you. Item 6, Mayor Robertson, discussion for possible action. Approval to reschedule the August 
2023 City Council meeting to August 17th. So city officials attending the Nevada League of Cities Conference August 8th through 11th uh, will not miss August 1st meeting. And if they're all there, I guess you guys can have one. Motion. Motion from Councilman Rowley. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second from Councilman Trask. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carried and so ordered. Item 7, Councilman Elliott, Tree Board Chairman Wolf. Discussion only. Update on USDA Forest Service Urban and Community Forest and Inflation Reduction Act, IRA. Equity through Whitecombe County Forest Reinitiative Grant Application. Chairman Wolf. And I got to apologize real quick. I can't remember if I talked with you guys about this before. I've been talking it up so darn much. You guys are familiar with the bones of this thing, correct? Don't apologize. Just hit the ground running. Okay. So then, um, <clears throat> what, I, what I believe I was here to do then was to bring up to date on the the uh, grant request went in before you know the closing date, so it was accepted. Um, we heard back that uh, you know the entire grant was for the entire country was 1.2 billion, and we thought our little 3.4 million would be a drop in the bucket. And it turns out that there was actually uh, six billion dollars in requests that went for this IRA grant, so it's probably going to be a little bit tougher competition than what we anticipated, but we feel like we did a good uh, a good presentation, and uh, they committed to uh, making a decision by August 30th, um, and then they have to cut their checks before the end of this fiscal year, which is September 30th, so we should hear in a fairly uh, timely manner um, where we stood on our grant application, and as soon as we hear, we'll um, we'll let the council know. Okay. We're really excited for the work you guys are doing. Well, we're, if, man, we're, if, if, if this grant gets accept, accepted, uh, it'll be a huge thing, huge thing for the community. It'll be really a massive project. Mm -hmm. so, hey, if, so if we get this accepted, are you going to throw a huge wooden bonfire? <laughs> After we do all the pruning, we'll have all the wood you want for that. <laughs> Any other questions for Chair Moore? Thank you. Right, thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Item 8, Councilman Alder, Councilman Elliott. Discussion only. Update on board group efforts on the city meeting's behalf to secure federal and state funding. Basically, the report that uh, Cook Lee put out basically covered it. You know, we're still in the funding process and how much is in Washington and stuck in one spot. Basically, that's how they Yeah. So, <coughs> hopefully, everything's going to come through as a the report. Um, we will have we will have um, Senator Cortez Mesa here uh, July 6th to the 8th, I believe, and she's going to um, be looking at some of those projects. So we're excited to show her what some of that work back in Washington D.C. is going to be doing up here in City Hill. <coughs> Anything else? Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move on to Item Seven, Public Comment. Please state your name for the record. You'll have three minutes. I don't understand how to think that because 12 people responded, if those things went out in the case to Mr. Reed, if he got three responses, that's a quarter of your statement. If he was three of the 12 responses because he got one per license, that's not a very effective study. Um, I have to take issue with um, Pat in regarding in her comments saying that Pine West was the bully. I sat through this meeting on April 13th when Mr. Boywood threatened to pull their project, their $50 million project of his hotel, casino, and his 400 apartments if you allow Pine West in. I think that they're the ones that are acting as though they're the bully. They stated they pulled basin engineering off the job just because they aren't going to proceed if you allow somebody else to come in. I don't think that's fair. Um, back to my comments in item one regarding exposing oneself to vulnerability and criticism following opposition to speak out publicly for or against any project. On May 5th, the Bishop Cole Tribune published a letter to the editor in opposition to the Woods lobbying against Pine West proposed development. 
Personally, I found the comments written spot on. However, I can only assume it struck a chord with Mr. Boywood given that he responded back with his own letter to the editor on May the 12th. But what you likely do not know is Mr. Boywood did not take kindly to the letter to the editor in the prior week's edition and has since removed the Bristlecone from Tribune from being sold in his establishment. Free speech comes at a cost when you disagree with what those want that are in control. Uh, as far as the commissioners, they did receive an update on the Cave Lake project from Keith Farrell. The dam is expected to be completed in December 2023. It's going to take approximately nine months to refill the lake. Uh, the proposed reopening for Cave Lake is currently December 2024. Um, it's amazing to ask and receive an answer instead of all the in innuendo being spewed on Facebook speak about being informed and attending the meetings. I hope that this council will continue to pursue this with Pine West. We need that corner cleaned up. If somebody else has a better idea or you all have millions of dollars in your pocket, bring it forward. But again, I don't want those apartments out my front door and I'm gonna do everything I can to see that I don't have to have them. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comments? Hello, Van Camp, 1125 Mary Street. I was at the end of the JCR Mickey Mouse Murray Street project. My driveway was torn out and replaced with the steep curb and the only access to my garage is by piling lumber in the gutter. Many residents are in the same dilemma with their driveways. Due to the heavy traffic speeding on Murray, I will not park on the street. If and when the somewhat redo job happens, would, will there be someone to oversee the project and make the correction on this substandard mess as it was highly unlikely there was no watchdog in the beginning? If and when the somewhat redo job happens, will it start in a timely fashion? I understand that JCR has many projects to do and the county has granted them extensions on some of their projects. Where will Murray Street fit into the schedule? JCR is famous for doing their substandard work in sub-zero weather. My sidewalk and curb was poured in December. Now it has cracks, separation, gouges, and everything else in the cement. Will the somewhat redo last as long as the original project? Because it was nine to ten months. Will the residents again be subjected to parking in the alleyways for nine months or more, even during the winter? Will we be yet again without a water truck for months on end and putting up with the dust bowl conditions while a water truck is parked around the corner leaking down Mill Street? In closing, if nothing is to be done to Bunter, Hunter Biden, I mean, I'm sorry, JCR, I'm asking the city to bring equipment to my house, rip out the curb, and give my driveway access back. Plus, the water really doesn't run down the gutters, it runs down the middle and the side of the road. Thank you. Howdy, my name is Ray R. Gerber, I live in Murray Street as well. I'm here to piggyback a little bit uh, about what Phil is talking about the construction on Murray Street and JCR. My concern goes a little bit deeper than just having access to my driveway, which is nearly impossible to get up on a typical 45 degree angle walk up in my own driveway. I have noticed that the construction on Murray Street started on this or block and continued about halfway up to the 1100 block. I counted six other residents that had a lower slope entrance into the driveway, while the 1100 block all had the rounded top, which is extremely hard to get to. My concern, like I mentioned, is a little bit more deeper than access to my driveway. I'm actually a disabled veteran. I'm an amputee and I'm actually deaf. While I'm in the comfort of my home, I like to utilize my wheelchair and not have my prosthetic on. One evening last summer, while I was outside with my dog, my dog discovered she could jump the fence when she went to chase the neighbor's cat. In my attempt to retrieve her, I found that the curbing is not very ADA friendly. As my wheelchair tipped over, 
thankfully another neighbor from across the street just happened to be out there. And he came to my aid to help pick me up and get me back on the street. Somehow my dog decided to come back and I didn't have to chase her no longer. I just want to just mention that I'm not sure why we didn't get the same type of curbing that the rest of the development got for the project. It's just extremely frustrating for me. I have, my options are to wheel down to the end of the block to get out to an 80A curb, or I'm just stuck where I'm at. The real issue is the parking on Murray Street. Residents who don't have driveways, they tend to park on the sidewalk, which makes it impossible for people in a wheelchair. That's all I want to say. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yeah. I sat here and listened to the, the business impact study. Oh, money shrimp. And I didn't understand it. You sent it out to people in like-minded businesses, but we didn't send anything, so we know they got it. So we didn't send anything certified. I can't confirm whether it was certified okay. or not. So I don't know that aside, Patty you also said it went years. to license holders. So it could have gone to the same person for five different businesses. And out of the 30, 12 sent it back. So we could be seeing three people or four people that sent it back. I'm just, I'm a little confused how we decided that that is a, a sample. So I'm done. Thank you. Any other public comments? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I want to remind you that uh, no one has advocated ADA compliance more than I, and I feel for these people. I want to remind you, your engineering inspectors are what failed these people as well as the city of Eden. You need to address that. Mr. Mayor, earlier I was talking about the uh, conditions down on Avenue B and H B, how we want our community to be uh, friendly. That stack down there has graffiti on it. Unfortunately, those that did the painting spelled fun with a C and a K. I've reported this twice now. We need to address it. That's not a good uh, image. You're going to have a ping pong train, and the only thing that's going to ping pong are the poor people who have to travel by that and witness graffiti in this community. We have a concern regarding how the uh, the Pine West, and I don't mean anything in it, uh, negative toward the Pine West, but some of those property owners that are in the area, in particular the one at 701, has an omni that's been falling apart for months. No citations, no closing off for safety, and yet we're looking the other way. Either we have rules and regulations or we don't. At the last uh, Planning Commission meeting, I asked the uh, Chairman, that I was requesting a copy of any and all complaints made that involve the Pine West LLC proposed development area and the dates of each complaint. I would like to know what the complaint regarded, who made it, to which government entity it was addressed, who resolved the concern, the date it was resolved, and a copy of the written action taken and to whom it was addressed. Nothing to date. <coughs> Got my notes. You might try running. We'd be off a lot better. Mr. Mayor, uh, I've yet to receive any uh, any confirmation that some action has been taken on Jennifer Lee's encroachment on the city uh, sidewalk area. Nothing yet. I want to remind you that uh, you folks in 2000, or the city in 2011, after giving me permission to put in curb gutter and sidewalk to code, ended up soon. I had to get an attorney to make that go away. Again, either you have rules and regulations or you don't. Mr. Mayor, uh, I want to know who paved uh, in front of and alongside 901 Avenue H and if it was a cost to the city. That's all new. Mr. Mayor, I've asked for permission uh, 
All right, I've asked for permits to park behind my Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Thank you. I need some answers, Mr. Mayor. Not a thank you. Is there any other public comment? Please proceed. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak to the public comment. George, I'm sorry, my name is Sandy Marino. George, I'm one of those people that have complained about that neighborhood. Nothing in writing. And well, I, I don't know what they do with it. Well, Ms. Marino, you're out of order. You're, you're yeah. speaking to the... Okay, I apologize then. Uh, I'm one of those people that have complained about the property in the past. And the response I got was, it's not enough. And if the paperwork is going to disappear or not get turned in, then I will make a habit of coming to these meetings and turning it in at the end of the meeting, if that's what is what it's going to take to make sure that there's a witness that I turned in a complaint for. Um, the property's nasty, dirty. Um, we got home from the store this morning. There is a backpacker walking right through our yard. I've seen him before checking the doors. Um, when the abatement was done, was it two to three years ago? It was never completed. That's when I turned in my complaint, asking why it hadn't been completed, along with other issues. So there have been complaints, and I don't know why. At one time, maybe you didn't have a code enforcement officer, but there have been complaints. And if they're not on record, then you've got another issue, that the record's not there. So, like I said, I guess I'll have to start coming to meetings and turning it in and reading it to all of you. And while we're on the topic, at some point, I would like to address the issue of the dogs that are constantly allowed to be loose for two years in a row. Uh, all they get is supposedly a fine, and the fine is supposed to increase. But the one dog we have loose in our neighborhood is constantly loose, and the guy says, I just paid the ticket. So I think maybe you need to come up with a new system for um, repeat offenders for the dogs that are loose all the time. And a couple weekends ago, I witnessed that same dog attacking the lady who was holding her dog up above her head because this pit bull was jumping on her trying to get to her dog. And I yelled at her from across the way, get in your house, which she finally did. And now I have more issues with the same neighbors who have been allowed to let this dog run loose all the time. It attacked my puppy at the front door. I fell with it. I have scars. My ribs still hurt. And it doesn't seem to matter. This dog seems to have more rights to our property than the neighbors do. And people that live on their own property have no rights. So I think that would be maybe something in the future. You could find a language, maybe a point system, a point for this offense, two points for that offense, and maybe at some point the dog can be removed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing and seeing none. Anybody? Please. I have a weird question. <laughs> Sorry. So I just want to just clarify. So the, the, this was not the first reading, right? So the, the ordinance still needs to be yeah. read, or that was the go. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Hi, hi, guys. Pam Kellogg. Um, so the first reading is still it still has to happen, correct? This was the first reading. Oh, this was the first reading. Okay, so the there may be reading. like a little bit of a of a of a goof. We're not sure. So because it still says May, the what you sent out still reads May. Because I think that whole thing was boiled down to this May versus shall, right? It was so, separated out. So there was a bunch of F12 was under the May provisions. I left everything else as May and separated out down below under okay. section. I believe it's G. It okay. says the board shall, and then just the 40 hotel room is a shall. Okay, because I, I mean, I would just hate to think about, you know, 10 years from now, a shall may whole thing again. No, th this okay. would be separate. Okay, okay, thank you. Sorry to vote. Bye. No problem. Any other public comment? Last call. Hearing and seeing none, we'll close public comment. And I'll make a motion to adjourn. This has been a Georgetown production. George Chat just reporting.